senior day was the emotions on, on edge with the adrenaline? You know, as a coach, you want to you hope not. <laughs> we had we had a really good week of practice. Um, Thursday Thursday's practice was probably the best practice we've had all year. And, uh, I felt pretty pretty good about these guys and the relationship that they have. They keep coming closer together, coming closer together. We did a special thing last night. We had dinner and they all got up and spoke to one another. And um, that's the type of things you need to do, I think, to be a great team, a great family. I mean, well, we always say family as coaches, but are you really living it? Do you really believe it? And uh, that's where we're headed. They like each other. They want to be around each other. And that's showing now on the court. And we're starting to get there. We still can get better, which is crazy. Because we played a great team today who plays extremely hard. They're well coached. They got great players. And, and we did we did a really good job. I'm really proud of the way this team played. I don't know how much you were able to see of him before all the injuries. I mean, the title, the title looks like he's getting back to that pre-injury level. And that has to be a good sign considering you've already got a big three to ride now. You've got him and obviously Carlos is supporting those guys. Yeah, I mean, Tyler is playing great basketball. It's great to see him healthy. It's great to see him having fun and enjoying playing. And, you know, he's out there just playing with a clear head, playing with great confidence. And that's why I, I say the same thing with Carlos. Uh, I had a feeling my gut was telling me, you know, just keep Carlos on the bench, you know, because I was kind of going with John, Jake, and, and Corey. They had two fouls. But I think when Carlos is fresh in the second half, he usually turns it up a notch, and he did today. Coach, what was commenting that, you know, going into the tournament, that it's not just BU, there's a lot of seniors going to be coming at Hartford that haven't been to the NCAA tournament. And he said he thinks that's going to set the intensity level. Do you kind of agree with that? You know, guys like Blake are really You know, I, I think the seniors will set the, uh, set the intensity level. Uh, nobody wants to go home early. Everybody wants to get to the big dance. And the way we're going to treat it is it's the next game on our schedule. we got to continue to play hard, continue to get better, don't take anything for granted, and play like it's your last game. You know, I always use the term play BU basketball, which is play hard. You see it up here, play hard together, smart with pride. If we can do, if we can do that the way we did it today. Because sometimes you see guys in senior games, somebody trying to get theirs, somebody trying to get 20, somebody trying to do what, what's not in, within the team or within the offense. And you look at all these seniors, they didn't do that today. Everybody tried to bear down and play great defense and rebound. Sorry. That's all right. Uh, Coach, 25 fouls today to gain 16. Um, John and Corey both fell out. Does that concern you at all, or did you feel like that was just the aggressive effort you needed on defense to beat uh, this black players team? You, you know, I want to play hard, but I want to play smart. You know, I don't want just reaching fouls or touch fouls or simple fouls. I don't want that. Uh, but I did like the fact that they were playing hard. They were, always were playing smart, but they played hard. And it was nice to see other guys step up. In the first half, you guys obviously took that lead, um, and the foul differential starts to swing some way. Do you have to keep in the back of your head like how hard you can work the rest when you obviously be right in front? Maybe they don't want to hear it as much. You know what? I, I, it may seem like I'm working the refs. I actually have just a dialogue with them. You know, it's probably nervous energy more than anything. You're just kind of talking to them. What would you say? What this is? What, I say, what do you think? No, it's nothing. No cursing. Nothing too. You know. You know, I know where you live. <laughs> it's nothing like that, you know. It's more just having a conversation. I thought I saw something different. They told me what they saw. I learned that from Jay. So it's not like some of the comments that come out of the student section towards the refs. That <laughs> <laughs> words are behind me. I heard some good ones today. That's what they buy a ticket. Yeah. So going back to the family thing. In the second half, when Brandon hit his three, a couple of the guys were just smiling. It wasn't just Brandon smiling. It was all the guys and. When John hit the deck after a fast court break, it wasn't one guy helping him up, it was all four. Was that something you focus on at halftime, saying this is your last half here at Case, or is that just a transition? You see it also in practice. No, we see it in practice. It's something, these guys like each other. They like being around each other. That For a coach, that's the biggest thing. They, they actually, we're getting good chemistry. We're starting to know our rotations. And um, we see it in practice, and, it, and it's starting to show in games. I've been preaching that for a month now. Guys, I understand we, we don't we practice one way, and then we play a different way in a game. When are we going to take practice and transfer it to a game? And I, and I think today we did. I think Binghamton we did. And um, 
it was awesome to see Brendan Sullivan and the excitement on the guys on the bench, the excitement on the guys on the ground. And then when you see four guys that go pick up another teammate, that's special. That's family. And then that, that's a team headed in the right direction. Going all the way back to late October when practice started, you were telling us that your one year goals for this team would be the best team it can be at the end of the season. So now that the end of the season is, is coming up, do you feel like you, you're close to that now? We're, we're getting close. Uh, I'm really thankful that you remembered that. I appreciate that. <laughs> we're, we're getting close, but I think we can be better. I really do. I think we can get better. I think we can get some more out of some other guys. I think some other guys can step it up in the scoring end and, and on the defensive end. And um, to me, that's scary. And to me, that gives me, I, that's the excitement I feel right now going into Monday's practice. I'm fired up to get to Monday. I know I'm going to let these guys get enjoy it today. You know, I'm not, I can't wait for Monday. You know, we know who we're playing. We're playing Binghamton. We're going to start, we're going to start watching film and get ready for them, I'm sure. They can't wait to play us. I mean, because, you know, they were on the tail end of a four for a road trip, four game road trip, when they got us. So they'll be ready to play, trust me. Just a general comment on John Holland's stretch run. Didn't let down, I mean, I know he didn't score 43, but that was... Uh, you know, it's John, John's got a tough role. His role is to get us, you know, 20, and then play great defense, and rebound the basketball. He had 23 and seven today, he only had one turnover. He did some great things. He's got a very difficult role, and our guys understand his role. He's going to take bad shots. But, you know, he had 29 a couple games ago. He had 43. Now he has 23 today. He only played 25 minutes. I mean, that's pretty amazing. And our guys are recognizing we got to try to get him the ball as much as we can because we're that much better when he scored. It's going to be scary when, when Corey starts drilling it or Jake starts drilling it. It's going to be scary. It really is. Coach, talk about being the best team to be at the end of the season. Um, do you think that beating Maine today, I know that they went on their long road trip and you know, emotional night, but still, Maine was still at the top of the conference yeah. a little while back. And um, you know, you guys didn't perform very well against the, well, you performed pretty well against the last time, you still didn't mm -hmm. get the win. Yeah. But um, you know, you didn't get the wins against those other top teams in the conference like Vermont and Stony Brook. Do you think that this is an important, um, like a hump that you had to get over heading into the conference to be um, that best team you can be? Do you think it's a good benchmark? It's a, it's a good question. And the reason it's a good question because we have not beat anybody above us yeah. in, a, in, a, in a long time. And we were like, early on, we were right there with Vermont and we get our, the doors blown off us. I think we're healthy, finally. And I think because we're healthy, we got a nice rotation now. Everybody understands their role. Um, we're, we're getting to be the best team that we can be. Now, is that good enough to beat Binghamton on Saturday? I hope so. I don't know. I don't know. But this week of practice is extremely important because we can't even think about Vermont. We can't think about Stony Brook. We can't think about the Sunday. Don't even think about that day. You think about Saturday, and that's it. That's the when, when Villanova used to go to all the NCAA tournaments, we used to put a bracket together. All we would think about is that first game. That first game was the most important thing. Didn't matter who was next. Did not matter. So we got to go and get prepared for Binghamton and be ready to play. And then if we can get that one, who knows?